All right, salam alaikum and welcome to our new video. Today we're talking about Staphylococcus, the genus Staphylococcus, and it has over 30 species in it. But only three of them are medically important, so we're going to focus on those three today. Let's just review where Staphylococcus was in the gram positive classification. So remember, we had three cocci and four rods. Now, the rods, uh, two of them, were spore forming. Uh, these guys were back in the closet, Bacillus and Clostridium, and two of them were non spore forming. These guys were crying hysterically because they couldn't form spores, Corine bacterium and Listeria. And I put question marks in case you want to test yourself. So let's talk about the cocci now. This is what we're going to focus on today. We can basically divide them into catalase positive and catalase negative. Um, catalase positive is Staphylococcus. That's our subject today. And the catalase negative was Streptococcus. Alright, Staphylococcus. We said there are three medically important species within it. The most well-known one is Staph aureus. And this is coagulase positive. The other two are coagulase negative, and they are Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus. All right, now how do we differentiate between um, Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus? It's based on the novobiosin test. Novobiosin is an antibiotic. So you just look at their resistance to it. Staph epidermidis is sensitive to novobiosin and Staph saprophyticus is resistant to it. And we'll talk more about this later. All right, let's talk about Staphylococcus aureus now. So we're going to go through the diagnostic te tests that you need to do for Staph aureus. So let's say we have a sputum sample here and you don't know Staph aureus, you need to do all these tests to figure out whether it's Staph aureus or not. So firstly we'll do the gram stain. And what you're going to see on the gram stain, you're going to see uh, gram positive or blue cocci and they're going to be arranged in clusters as you see here. Secondly we're going to culture the uh, sample that we have on blood agar. Now blood agar is basically a gel that is mixed with blood, so it has RBCs in it. And if we have, if our sample contains Staph aureus, we're going to see two things on our blood agar. Firstly, we're going to see golden colonies. Staphylococcus aureus. Aureus means golden in Latin, so that's a nice way to remember it. And the second thing is you can see a transparent halo around the colonies. So that area is where the RBCs have been broken down. That's called hemolysis. And they've been broken down completely here. That's why it's transparent. So we call it beta hemolysis. So remember that Staph aureus forms golden colonies and causes beta hemolysis on blood agar. Okay, the third thing we're going to do is going to look at the uh, metabolic characteristics of Staph aureus. And specifically, we're looking if it has the catalase enzyme or not. Now, remember, the catalase enzyme, it breaks down hydrogen peroxide. And when it does so, it produces gas, which form bubbles. So if you have a uh, colony of Staph aureus and you mix it with hydrogen peroxide, it's going to form bubbles like this. And that's a catalase positive test. The way I remember it is they look like uh, Staph aureus under the microscope. And also remember that it's coagulase positive. Okay, now that we've talked about all the tests that you can do for Staph aureus, um, let's look at the diseases that Staph aureus can cause and the different virulence factors that help it cause these diseases. So here's your Staph aureus cell. I like drawing cells. The Staph aureus cell has many proteins, which are called virulence factors and they help it cause disease. Now some of these proteins are stuck to the cell and we call these protective proteins 
and some of these proteins are secreted into the extracellular environment and we call these um, exotoxins. Some of the important protective proteins that Staph aureus has, we're going to mention three of them. So the first one is called protein A and I just imagine that it looks like this. And protein A does something really cool. It binds antibodies, IgG antibodies, but it binds them at the FC portion. And basically, it flips it around. So these antibodies can't bind to the Staph aureus, and hence you don't get um, opsonization and phagocytosis. The second protective protein is coagulase. We know Staph aureus is coagulase positive. Now, coagulase, from its name, causes coagulation. Basically, it'll cause fibrin strands to form around the bacteria, which protect it. Those are the fibrin strands. And this allows it to cause abscesses. The third protective protein that Staph aureus has is penicillinase. Now, from its name, penicillinase breaks down penicillin. So normal penicillins are not going to work against Staph aureus. However, you can use penicillinase resistant penicillins such as methicillin. So in theory, methicillin should work against Staph aureus. Sometimes it doesn't. And we're going to explain why a bit later. And then now you're going to learn about three exotoxins that it has. So the first exotoxin is called exfoliatin. The second exotoxin is called enterotoxin. And the third is called TSST1. And that's not a missile. That's actually toxic shock syndrome toxin 1. And each of these toxins causes a specific disease. So exfoliating, from its name, it causes exfoliation. So what kind of disease does it cause? It causes scalded skin syndrome. Enterotoxin, from its name, it affects the GI, so what's it going to cause? It's going to cause gastroenteritis. Now, TSST1 stands for Toxic Shock Syndrome, and so TSST1 causes a huge release of inflammatory cytokines and shock. All right, so these are the three diseases that Staph aureus can cause with its three different exotoxins. Now, let's talk about the diseases that it causes by direct invasion. And there's an easy way to remember it. I just remember from head to toe. Basically, staph can infect almost any organ in the body. And so if you just go from head to toe, it'll cause a disease in almost every system. Starting from the head, it causes meningitis. And then with the heart, it causes acute bacterial endocarditis. Acute, remember that. And then the chest, it causes pneumonia. Um, somewhere around the abdomen... I mean, this, this is like the best place to put it, but it affects the blood here, it causes sepsis. And then down there, it causes UTI. Um, coming from the knee, this is a kneecap. It can cause two diseases, osteomyelitis and septic arthritis. And then in the foot, or that's, that's often where skin, skin diseases manifest, it can cause skin infection or cellulitis. How do we treat Staph aureus? Well, firstly, Staph aureus has penicillinase, so you want to use penicillinase-resistant penicillin. Examples of this are um, nafcillin, IV, or dicloxacillin, uh, oral. Alternatively, you can use first-generation cephalosporins because these antibiotics uh, also work against uh, gram positives, the first-generation cephalosporins. Now, there's one kind of Staph aureus which we didn't mention, and that's MRSA, or methicillin-resistant Staph aureus. Now, how is this different? Well, remember we said you can use methicillins against Staph aureus because it's penicillinase-resistant. Well, some Staph aureus has also developed resistance against methicillin. And the way they've developed it is by having 
a new penicillin binding protein. So methicillin will normally attack a penicillin binding protein, but now it has a new kind of penicillin binding protein. And these staph aureus are also resistant to methicillin. And we call them MRSA. And since you can't use methicillin against them, we treat them with vancomycin, IV. All right, that's all about Staph aureus. Let's look at Staph epidermidis. Now, Staph epidermidis, from its name epidermidis, lives on the skin normally. It's one of the normal flora of the skin. And this means that it's gonna contaminate blood cultures. This is the clinical relevance. And so, remember to take blood cultures from more than two sites in case it contaminates one of your cultures. Now another implication is it'll contaminate urine samples. And why is this important? Because Staph saprophyticus, the third kind of Staph, is a very common cause of UTIs. So when you see Staphylococcus in your urine sample, you're not sure is this a Staph saprophyticus, a cause of UTI, or is it just contamination by Staph epidermidis? So in this case, you, you're gonna do the neurobiosin test. This is where it's relevant. And if it's sensitive to neurobiosin, this is epidermidis. So it's likely to be contamination. And if it's resistant, then this is Staph saprophyticus and it's likely to be the cause of your UTI. All right, the third implication of Staph epidermidis being a normal flaw in the skin Plus, remember we said epidermidis, we said this in the first video, epidermidis forms a biofilm. So it lives on the skin and it forms a biofilm. So what's its favorite kind of infection gonna be? It's gonna infect anything that goes through the skin, like um, IV lines and prosthetic heart valves or prosthetic joints. All right, and here's a really cool picture of staph epidermidis. This is a real picture, scanning electron microscope and it's just been colored. And you can see all that purple stuff between the cells. That's the biofilm that Staph Epidermidis produces. And this helps it stick to the IV lines and stick to the prosthetics. So hopefully now you'll really remember that Staph Epidermidis causes infections using its biofilm. Okay, how do you treat Staph Epidermidis? Uh, it has a biofilm, so this uh, causes multi-drug resistance. And so you treat it with vancomycin, just like MRSA. All right, let's talk about Staphylococcus saprophyticus, our last species, medically important, in the Staphylococci. So we said it's novobiosin resistant. Now the way I remember it is saprophyticus. I remember it as saprophyticus. It fights novobiosin. It's novobiosin resistant. Its favorite infection is causing UTIs. It's the second most common cause of UTIs in sexually active young women. And how do you treat this guy? Well, you just treat it with penicillin. It doesn't have any of the resistance factors of its um, siblings, Epidermidis or Aureus. And that's all for Staphylococci. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video about Streptococci.